ثنيات الوداع وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا لله دا Oh, the white moon rose over us from the valley of Ada. I've been asked to uh, describe my uncle uh, in three minutes, and I'll do that in three minutes. But it's it's <laughs> it's uh, where do you really begin with someone with 60 years of community service and has um, and his passion has never been stronger and still continues today. So I've had this scripted so I can stick to that time simply because I'd be here all day trying to describe my uncle and all of his achievements. My uncle Ibrahim Delal was the first wave of Turkish Cypriot immigrants that came to Australia in 1950 following my own father who was here in 1948 from Cyprus. My uncle was born in Larnaca in 1932 and the grandson of the last Ottoman Mufti of Cyprus, Sheikh Mehmet Al. He along with his elder brothers received good religious education from early childhood which taught him to have important values such as understanding and respect for all people regardless of their ethnic, religious or cultural background. I remember despite my uncle having such a very busy family life, uh, I would see that when I was young, in my teen years and, and, and even now, along with my aunt and their three daughters, I've never met a man that's devoted so much of his spare time and energy to the community. I've always known him with full of energy and dedication and really the one motto we always had was we must do things for the betterment of the community. I, remember, I don't remember but I, I know the stories, well, I suppose I vaguely remember I was in my teens again when the bilateral agreements were signed in 1967 that allowed thousands of Turkish immigrants to Australia. My uncle played a major role in helping the Turkish families and workers settle in Australia at the time find jobs, purchase their house. He also helped them establish several Turkish media outlets, gave, um, gave them the opportunity, uh, he also developed news outlets and gave them the opportunity to hear news from their homeland and to have better communications with their community. Because one of the things that he really believed and he had foresight for was that the quicker people could settle and integrate into community, they can help others and therefore they can also make their contribution to Australia's social, economic and cultural well-being. Because what he believed on, if I help, others will then be able to quickly develop those skills to help others and you have the monopoly effect. And I think that's uh, something that should be applauded uh, by someone who, who really felt, wasn't really thinking about himself, but really more about the community. He also was very much involved in the contribution to Australia itself. In 1976 he founded numerous halal certificate organisations which really earned Australia millions and millions of dollars through exporting halal meat to Muslim countries. He played an active role in establishing and running many cultural and educational and religious organisations including the Cyprus Turkish Association, the Islamic Society of Victoria, I remember when I was a child with the first headquarters in Rathdown Street along with Sheikh Fagmi there, the Preston Mosque, the Australian Federation of Islamic Societies, the Coburg Mosque, Thomastown Mosque, the Western Trace Society and Paran Mosque, Australian Federation of Islamic Councils, the Halal Meat Committee, Cypriot Turkish Islamic Society, and the Sinemir Foundation and the Sunshine Mosque, and that list goes on. As a result of his work in the community, my uncle has had opportunity to meet many influential people, but he's always used them for the betterment of the community and to establish networks for others. He never kept those people to himself. He always made sure that he made great introductions so that others could actually can benefit from those uh, associations and from those meeting those very influential political, religious or community leaders. I've always known him to be a very humble person, uh, always full of uh, humility. I've often heard him say, it's always, and I think most of you have heard that famous saying, is it's always more important to give than receive. And he, he still says that today. He's never looked to be rewarded, he's always wanted to give and, and that is something that's become quite a rare commodity in today's world. But I suppose a great, amongst his greatest achievements uh, in 1997 he helped establish Leadership College, Victoria's first, I suppose, Victorian multicultural school established by the Turkish community. It facil he facilitated its growth uh, by enrolling about 28 students and in 1997 to over now 2,000 students today, Ishik College has 
over five campuses, uh, and my uncle has been honoured um, by being one of those campuses being named after him. So he's done outstanding community service work to the community, and of course he has been recognised. He received the Queen Elizabeth Silver Jubilee Medal in recognition, uh, the Order of Australia in 2007 for his services to the Islamic and Turkish communities. But I think one of the greatest highlights was that in 2010, uh, a biography of my uncle was, put, uh, was penned and, and it was aptly titled The Struggle of Ibrahim, a biography of an Australian Muslim. According to the author, uh, Monash University lecturer Salih Huja, the idea for my uncle's biography came after he had travelled with him, uh, I think, uh, to an academic conference in North America. And the author actually states that through our conversation over of this 10-day trip, I discovered that Ibrahim was a living history of Australian Muslim community. He had actually witnessed the growth of the Muslim population and the struggles to settle and integrate into Australia. His memory was weakening, so due to old age, I felt, and I felt absolutely compelled that I had to put this book together so we didn't lose those experiences. And that, that's what happens, and we need to value a lot of our elder generations because they have so much history and so much wealth there, and it needs to be recorded because that's how we learn as a community. So, in conclusion, I think um, my uncle has made an, an enormous contribution. I, I and my family have certainly have been proud of him, and he has always been my mentor, and I've tried to emulate all of those values that he has, uh, that he naturally has, and uh, I congratulate him, and, and thank you for everything, uncle. <laughs> so, if I can call him up. As thank you very much for all you said. I never realized that important. I never felt that important. I always thought that I was the servant of Allah. And each day I ask myself, how many friends did you make today? How many people did have you made happy today? How many imam have you saved today? This is what I say every day. That's the purpose. Purpose of living. Now, what kept me really going? When I was a little boy, I always heard from my father and mother the policy of the Osman Turks, the Ottoman Turks. Hija Haraka, Ziyara Tijara. Learn and teach. Live, but to see that others live. That's the purpose of living. Right? So I'll translate that in, into, into English. Migration and action. Visit and train. Learn and teach. Live, but live to see that others live. That's the purpose of living. You don't live for yourself. Because we consider this life as the garden of heaven. You plant the seeds here, good deeds, for the pleasure of Allah, but the fruits are there. And you know that, life is very short, and time is very limited, and destiny, Kader, is not known. But we know one thing, we shall depart. We don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how, but we know we shall depart. When? When the maker and master of Allah says this word, Ooh. Spirit, my bird, let's call it a bird. Time is up. Fly back home. Yes. The bird flies back home. The cage stays behind. And the loved one stays the cage and places it where it belongs. They walk back. Some think, some do not think. Who is next? Life in a nutshell. So, if you're a billionaire, what can you do with it? Doesn't belong to us. Or you're uh, very knowledgeable. Or you have a, a position of power. Doesn't belong to us. Give it to us in trust for a little while. We test what are we doing for? Are we making others suffer? Are we making the creator, the people, the human beings suffer? We are there to serve them. No, make them suffer. We are answerable. Then we will depart. 
answer questions. Whether we believe it or not, we shall do that. We shall answer questions for everything that we have, which is given to us in trust. After I'm going to read a poem to you, which I wrote, I can't remember, 60s, 80s, whatever, but I still like it. I think you'll like it too. So, all the things that as has said, I achieved, really, you know what I did? Sincere intention and action. Allah made it happen, not me. I'm going to tell you something, a very short experience. When we were building the Sunshine Mosque with, with his father, one day we were short of $70,000 because need to be paid within a one week. I didn't have it. Where we were, I don't know. So after Juma prayers, he was sitting inside, I went inside, he looked at me and said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm not wealthy. We didn't have to now. Everybody's wrong. Somebody walked in. He said, I want to make a donation. I thought maybe fifty dollars. Uh, he sat down. I said, brother, how much? He said, fifty thousand dollars. I thought, well, did I uh, hurt wrong? I, my brother looked at me and uh, looked at him. Then I started writing. I said, brother, what's your name? He says, no, uh, I don't want to be known. Allah knows. I said, all right. I said, now, what did you say, fifty dollars? No, he says, fifty thousand dollars. I'm writing the check. So fifty thousand arrived. Did we plan for that? Did we ask for it? No. Allah is the one that changes, changes hearts and sent somebody to do a good deed. Now, a week later, the same man came in and said, I should have given you 60, because that was my intention. I gave you 50. Here's another 10. $60,000. The same day, another two men came in with $5,000. That was it. We didn't plan for it. We did not advertise. We didn't ask anybody. And this is what, how Allah changes hearts. Sincere intention and action for the pleasure of Allah. That's the only thing I know. I can't remember anything else. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Now, when it comes to the Selenia Foundation, as uh, has said, a school was named after me. I didn't ask for it. But the Selenia community was generous enough, good enough, humble enough to say, you deserve this, we're going to put your name on that. I do thank them very much. We have their representatives here, they're great people. They're there for the pleasure of Allah in education. They're doing a lot of good work. And you know what, last year, our high score in BC was 99.70. Year before, 99.8, and it goes on. In the 90s, always, 20 to 30 students. We need to educate our people, most important, so that we can help ourselves, our community, most importantly, we will make Australia greater, richer, and to become the best possible example for the whole world. There's a lot more to say, but maybe some other time. Thank you very much for listening. Jibrilu ata layla ta asra Wa rabbu da'a fi hadratihi Allahu, Allahu, Allahu